What's going on everybody? I uh, just wanted to address something with these trucks that I see a lot on Facebook, uh, especially at the den side and the older Ford truck pages. I'm on 67 to 72 and of course the 73 to 79s like this. And even some of the older pages uh, with the bull nose. And uh, it could be any truck. It doesn't even have to be Ford. It could be just a, a older truck in general. Uh, a lot of folks are having issues like wondering how to hook up uh, a radio. Like they all came with, a lot of them in, if this age came with like AM radios only. Uh, if you got the nice model, this one actually is a is an XLT uh, Ranger. It might have, probably came with an FM, but uh, regardless of that, uh, it was you know long before the CD players came out, and of course the the newer Bluetooth radios, and of course radios are kind of cheap these days. People want to upgrade, so I'm going to show you the basics of not only how to figure out what wires to tap into to hook up a new radio, but also some of the materials and the tools I use. It's actually pretty simple, so we're just gonna jump right into it. All right, so as far as supplies and tools here, let's just do a quick rundown here. I've got some tie wraps here. These are pretty short and small. These are perfect for cinching up these small wires on the stereo. I've got some longer ones here for when we need to get those wires underneath the dash. Uh, test light is probably the most important thing uh simple test lights all you need we're just looking for 12 volt uh uh full time and 12 volt keyed uh and this is all you need for that you don't need a voltmeter if you got a light test light like this this is perfect as far as stripping wires go if you have one of these obviously they're the best option as far as i'm concerned because not only can you you strip the wire but you have the crimp uh, part built in here as well but if you just have a couple of side cutters or a pair of dykes or nines here, whatever you have, that's great. That'll do the job. Um, yeah, these are Pioneer keys here. Uh, the reason I have these set out is if you ever, if you're buying a vehicle or if you're dealing with a truck or a car that has an old Pioneer, for instance, and this, th these are also used for other makes, but I know sometimes the keys are a little bit different size, but say you got a 30 year old cassette deck made by Pioneer, more likely these keys will fit and they'll slide into the side of the radio and you can pull that radio out. Uh, they usually sell these at the help section of advanced auto parts. So if you don't have a set, you can go get them pretty cheap there. Then as far as connectors go, you got your ring connectors here. This is great. We'll, we'll talk about these later from maybe if you need to find a spot in the, in the truck to ground to. That's great also if you ever need to run a wire to your battery. Those work good. Then you got your butt connectors here. Tr tried and true method, been around forever. You know, red, small, blue, medium, yellow, large, same color combination all the way across. And then these are the quick disconnect kind where you have a male and a female. Uh, some people don't like these. Um, I, I tend to not like them in certain instances, but if they're cramped correctly, they work great. And then of course, if you wanna trigger somebody, you can always use wire nuts. Uh, I won't even get into that, but you know, if that's all you got, just rock with this for the time being. Don't let anybody tell you you can't use wire nuts, even though there'll be several people that say so. But let's go ahead and get inside the truck and we'll take a look at what we got in there. All right, so I've got my Pioneer deck here. This is an actual CD player. It's one of the first ones I remember buying, probably it's been close to 20 years ago, that had the USB connected to it. And, uh, I like these. Um, I'm not recommending if you have something in mind, just roll with it. Um, of course, if you're buying a brand new radio, it's going to already have USB. But I know a lot of people just maybe have a CD player. But if you, if you were just going to take an old CD player that you had that didn't have USB, I would recommend getting something with USB on it because you can load that. You can load a memory thumb drive up with thousands of songs and, and never have to worry about hearing the same song again more than once in a given trip. So just a recommendation, but this is where these keys come in handy here. Um, if you look there, you'll see there's a slot right there and that goes there, you'll hear it click. And then I'll take this other one here. If I can do this with two hands there, and then you're essentially you're gonna pull. It's a lot easier if you pull with both hands, but um, take my word for it. If you're doing this with two free hands, this uh, deck is gonna slide right out of the cage. There's a cage, of course, that this thing sits in, and uh, I'll go ahead and pull this thing out now, and uh, you can take a look and uh, see what I'm talking about. 
Okay, I've got the radio pulled out of here and you can see here's the wiring harness is plugged in the back. Um, and this particular radio, there's the antenna hookup. I'm sorry, that's the USB hookup. I take that back. There's where I, all my songs are stored. Uh, let's see, the antenna hookup is actually right here and that plugs in right there. Keep in mind, depending on the make and model of the vehicle, you may have to buy an adapter to get the antenna to work in here. But I think on all these older vehicles, they have the larger adapter that will plug directly into the radio. I think some of the newer antenna uh, connections on the newer cars will not, and you'll need the adapter. But I think for these old Fords especially, you're fine. And now I have, uh, you, uh, excuse me, RCA connectors here because I have an equalizer hooked up. Uh, which also goes to an amplifier behind the seat. Uh, if that's something y'all would like to dig into in another video, we can, but I want to keep this straight up with the uh, the radio here. And of course, here's the harness that plugs into the back. So I'm going to go ahead and get this disconnected, and I'm going to show you a little bit about this hole here. Okay, the reason I wanted to show you this real quick is this is important. I know it's not so much about how to wire up the radio, but uh, when my dad had this truck years ago, this is his truck. I got it from him back in uh, late 2017 he had already put his own older pioneer deck in this and he wasn't really good about cutting the hole in the in the dash here and as you can see he cut it too big so this this uh isn't ever gonna sit in here correctly because he 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 didn't cut the hole to fit he cut it way too big and and this is one of those situations where that doesn't work now on the right side he did a great job but I would highly suggest taking your time, uh, holding, hold this cage up to, to the opening, take up maybe a, a, a Sharpie or something, highlight it, and then cut inside the Sharpie line. And, you know, just like with anything else, when you're cutting, it's always easier to cut more off. There's no way to put it back on. So just keep that in mind. Uh, try to measure several times, but try to make sure you don't overcut this hole. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and get this out and we'll uh, we'll show you what wires you need to look at as far as wiring up the radio. Okay, the whole reason you came to watch this video is basically this section here. Um, we got three wires that we need to make this radio turn on. Uh, we have, a, we need a, we need to find a constant 12 volt source. We need to find a switched or keyed 12 volt source. And of course a ground wire ground of course is going to be super simple uh i actually found a ground spot right underneath the here basically sanded some of this paint off i think there's already was already a hole here in the dash uh just sanded it off i've actually got a multiple grounds here i think it's either for the the tack or the afr gauge i have so that one's the easiest you can get out of the way really quick and that of course always ties in to the black cable on your harness of your radio. It's universally, it's always gonna be black. So the next one we need, it's the constant 12 volt source. That is always gonna be your yellow on your harness of your radio. And, and in this case, underneath the dash, the, the constant 12 volt for the radio is a green wire with the yellow stripe right there. You see it right there. If I take my test light and see if I can get in here with one hand and if I, there you go you see it's lit up so that's constant all the time and that only leaves one more and that's going to be the switched 12 volt source or keyed and that is always going to be red and as you can see here's the red uh, uh, wire off of the the harness of the radio now i didn't have any spare red in this in, in this case so i just used some white i had does anything different from what i'm currently using and if i follow the white up i have it going to a orange with a yellow stripe and that only gets hot if the key is on so i'll uh stick the probe down here you see nothing if i turn the key actually let's see wants to be difficult of course i'm there we go so i got it got the key on and there you see my light is lit up so so that one is orange with the yellow stripe that's it once you get those three wires hooked up your radio is going to come on it's going to show all the functionality you won't obviously get sound until you cut until you run 
uh, you'll, you should get speaker wire with a new radio, but if you, if you're using like a secondhand radio, you're going to have to source some speaker wire. I have all mine tied up here. I did want to pass along a couple of tips before I wrap this video up. Uh, mainly is give yourself some room to work when you are putting this radio in the dash. Um, obviously if you've never installed a newer radio, you're going to have to do this trimming. Of course, you're going to set this cage in. It's got tabs. You can try to push to keep it from coming out. Unfortunately, this one has been hacked up too much. My dad even cut the, the uh, metal cage inside. So, uh, it's kind of hacked up, but anyway, um, one thing I recommend is taking the, the ashtray out cause you can really get your hands in there. And of course you can see, you know, I can, you can really get in this stuff that way. And also if you just like going in through the bottom, if you have vents like I do in this truck, um, disconnect that hose down there and then you can really get underneath there. Of course, you know, you can go all the way under if you want. So just make some room for yourself if you can. It makes life a lot easier uh, to get in and get around stuff. So that's that um, as far as the installation of the radio goes. Okay, and the only thing left to do now is just to test, see if it comes on. Key on. And there it goes. Now the fun part is it's going to be in a demo mode if you have a radio like this, but the simpler the radio, the easier to fix the, the settings and get going about your business. But um, you will have to go in and set your clock and all that good stuff. But once you do it one time, if you get it done right the first time, this will be the only time you have to do it. Okay, I think I covered all the bases there. Put some comments down below if there's something else you need me to touch base on. Um, I can certainly do a video. I didn't want to even show the speakers and the amp and everything behind the truck seat because uh, this is basically just for those folks that are just trying to get a radio hooked up. But if that's something you are interested in and you want to see like how to do more of an uh, elaborate uh, installation on a vehicle like this. Um, I, I don't do anything super neat, but I can show you the basics of how I ran everything. If you'd like me to show you that, just put some comments down below. I'd be glad to go over that as well, but I just wanted to keep this video fairly short. Um, other than that, hope y'all are having a good one and keep on wrenching.